fourth QC tutorial in my QC tutorial series and today we're just going to be going over more of the meet and functions like play or pre think which is a very valuable function and we're gonna go over some other stuff like the impulse commands you guys always use the impulse commands to you know either spawn weapons or you know do various things so I'll teach you how to add your own alright so let's get in so just open up your QC program like we always do and first we're gonna work in weapons.qc so open that file up and scroll down scroll down we're going down pretty far and we're going to start right here in the the W attack right here all this stuff we're gonna go over this alright okay so when you find that okay so let's start local flow R this is just making a new float you know like you make new entities or vectors or whatever and R it's gonna represent something so R represents random it, it, as you can see you're applying the function random to that but see random it actually returns if I'm correct it returns a float value so it's gonna return a number and that's what that's what it is this has to be a float you can't apply like an entity to a float or a vector to a float it has to be the same type you have to apply a vector function to a vector you have to apply an entity function to an entity etc all right make vectors self dot v angle remember you're making you're making the um you're telling the code to use v angle stuff the player's first person view angle stuff all right this right here self dot show hostile equals time plus one this right here if you ever want to wake monsters up you know then you're going to put that in your function this right here and see this is w attack so when you go to fire your weapon this is the function that is called so when you're firing your weapon it's going to wake the monsters up so when you're playing quake and you fire your weapon and the monsters all know where you're at and stuff that's this little piece of code that does that that tells the monsters that man there's somebody shooting their gun let's go get him all right now you got a whole bunch of if statements so this one right here it's checking if you have the weapon axe the, the axe weapon so you can see right here self dot weapon equals it axe it's pretty obvious if you want to see all the different weapon definitions go to defs.qc where all your definitions are at go to about the middle and you got all your weapons nice and neat right here you got the axe the shotgun super shotgun nail gun etc that's where you can find them all right so it's gonna it's gonna check and see if you have the weapon the axe then you got your little curly braces which are which is the whole walls of this this check and then it's gonna play a sound it's gonna play the axe sound so when you when you swing when you use the axe you know you press the fire button it's gonna play this sound and then it's going to apply R to random and then it's going to check randomly for these so this one is checking if R, if random, see, you can basically just plug it in like that. If random is less than 0 0.25, then do this animation. This is an animation frame right here, or not a frame, an animation function that plays a set of frames. So this whole part right here, this is all just randomly checking, just randomly picking um, different animations there's there's four different animations for the axe and it's trying to find one randomly all right so it's checking if random is less than 0 0.5 less than 0 0.75 and then it's got else if random isn't less than any of these numbers if it's not less than them then do this animation so that would mean one because random random has to be checked under 1 1.0 1 so that means values like 0 .0 0 0.5 0 0.222 or whatever just keep it under 1 
self dot attacked fit attack finished equals time plus 0 0.5 this right here this is the time it takes before you can attack again so if you if you set this number to like five that means it's going to take five seconds before you can actually attack again so this is good for you know stopping the weapon getting some stop time so that's a good thing to use you can put this after anything let's just say you make a function that makes a grenade it, it throws grenades then you could just apply this to the bottom and it'll it'll say you can't do this again until the time is greater than actual time or the self dot attacked finish is greater than time which <clears throat> all this is being done under this function this is all being called under let's see weapon frame right here this is called every frame so impulse events can be handled as soon as possible so right here oh yeah by the way this function this is a continuous looped function this will just keep constantly 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 calling so if you wanted to check something really quick that gets just called a whole bunch of times this will never stop calling it see it's always checking if you're pressing self dot button one constantly checking and if you do press the self dot button zero which let me tell you that self dot button zero is the firing button self dot button two is for jumping and self dot button one that is a half finished button in the engine there's a tutorial out there if you ever want to get into engine coding where you can add this button like I added it to revamped so I could do armor lock because what these buttons do is you can hold these buttons if you tried to take the attack function and put it on impulse impulse commands, then you'd you'd press the but you'd press the um fire button, and it would shoot one bullet and stop, because the impulse commands have to be repeatedly pressed. But I don't want to confuse you anymore. Anyways, this right here is always being evaluated. Once you press self dot button zero, which is the fire button, then it's gonna call this function. And call W attack, which is all the firing functions. So basically, once you press self dot button zero, it's going to fire whatever weapon you're holding. Which that function is this function. So if you have the axe, it's gonna it's gonna evaluate this and do everything in the curly braces. Same with this. Then it's gonna evaluate the shotgun. And if you do have the shotgun and you shoot it, it's gonna play these player animations. And it's going to shoot your gun. Remember we studied this function. We made our own function. And then it's going to apply a set amount of time before you can attack again. Same with the super shotgun, the nail gun, super nail gun, grenade launcher, rocket launcher, lightning. So you, you can kind of get it, you know. The player animation, the time before you can attack again, and the sound effect. Alright, so now you've got that. No, I do not want to save. And now we're going to go into client.qc and I'm going to show you another cool function. So scroll down, scroll down, scroll down, scroll down. Okay, we're going to keep going down until you get to. We're going to a function called player. Uh, right here, player pre think. Scroll down to player pre think. This is called every single frame. I mean, this is the most used function, I think, in the QC. This is repeatedly called. So be careful when you're putting stuff in this function because this will slow down your game. Usually, I only use this for testing, and I had to use it for the crosshairs because the crosshairs always needed to be checked. But this is just like that one, the one weapon frame function I showed you guys. It's always being called. But the thing about the weapon frame function is um, it's kind of linked to this. It's linked down here. Weapon frame right there. See how that all links up? 
player post think. That's called every frame also. Just like player pre think is. So see, it's always checking what water what you know, how deep you are in the water. It's checking if you're dead so you can, you know, respawn. And it's checking if you're jumping and it's always it's constantly checking all this stuff. So if you have a mob that doesn't require, you know, jumping or something, I would take this out because this is constantly evaluating that and it's kind of, you know, memory, it's kind of CPU consuming. So I would, you know, kind of take some of this stuff out. But you can, it's alright to put stuff in here, you know, just don't clobber it up. So just so I can show you that this is constantly called, we're going to make a new function right at the bottom of it called center print center print like that and then put the two little parentheses and what this function is going to do is it's going to print a message right in the middle of your screen so put self because the player prethink function is tied to the player so self is the player all right put the little quotation marks and put whatever message you want i'm going to put um i'm going to put i am being called whoops being called okay and you can put this little dash and then an n and the dash the special dash is right above your enter key on the right hand side and you have to use that special dash you can't use this one because that doesn't work and what this is right here this means new line so this is basically gonna do this it's gonna print this message and then it's gonna basically press the enter button and then it's going to write a new message at the bottom if you do it. So I'll show you the difference. So right now, just put I am being called self, comma, I am being called save, compile. All right, minimize it. You're going to get the progs.dat right here. Replace it. Yes. Right, and start up your game okay this right off the bat it's gonna it's gonna print this message see I am being called right off the bat see that this function is always being called so it's always gonna print this message no matter what unless you're dead because if you're dead right here then it's gonna re it's going to return so th this code can't be called that's if you're dead right here if self dot dead flag equals dead dying you're dying so don't check if you're jumping and um, don't don't check for teleporters and don't check your ammo and don't print this message so copy that message right there I use control C copy that message and we're going to tie it to the firing function. So open up weapons.qc again. Scroll down to W fire shotgun. Right here. Now, right under the sound effect, if you're using if you're using the old one, the regular, you know, the regular Quake C, put it right under the sound effect. It really does not matter where you put this this function, the center print function in the code just put it anywhere in the fire shotgun code save compile take the progs.dat and replace it yes now what this is going to do is it's going to print the message when you shoot the gun see that's no message shoot the gun and it calls it but it's going to disappear see Anyways, that's about going to wrap up this tutorial. I hope it was helpful. And I'm going to start getting more into models and, you know, writing more complex functions later on. So, subscribe, rate. This is Mexicougar. Peace out.